Uh, is I remember when the Israelites, we talk about them a lot with all the guys, just because it's so easy to leave. Like they wish they could go back to slavery, if you remember that. They were dreaming of the life yeah. that they left. Yet also, I remember there being a point where they, they told God, I don't care about the promised land anymore. I care about your presence. If your presence is not in the promised land, I don't want to go. That's right. So that'd be like the blessing of the plane. God, here's the plane. I don't care if you're not in it. I don't want the plane. I don't want it. So I'm, I'm where you are. And then inside of that, that always seems like the place where God's like, because people that desire so much, sometimes they'll get it, but that'll be like the thing, like for some reason, God will do it for someone else and not the person that's like freaking out about desiring it. And I look at your like laying down as this like giving that thing that you desire so much and submitting it before God, truthfully, not God, I'm going to give this to you so you can give me no, a plane, yeah. but you're truthfully giving it to him though you have the desire, which I think is freaking cool. Like I don't have a desire to fly a plane. So the fact that you do have the desire it, and and you follow God, he directs your steps. That means that it's God's desire. But yeah. the way that you're going after it, I know you'll have a plane. Well, and, and let me tell you, that remember what I said about level 14, 15, 16, like yep. the, with that intimacy with the Lord? There's something that gives me more joy than being a pilot, and that is actually getting to pray with people on the phone or getting wow. to impart into them because it changes their life for eternity. An airplane only changes my life for a little bit of time. Yep. Right? But getting to, to, to put um, time where... Even if it's not even sharing wisdom or knowledge, it's just like, look, I believe and I'll fight and I'll pray with you. And we pray about something and them getting inspired and changed. That was way better than being any pilot, though. Yeah, I would love to hear your perspective on this. You said pretentious. I, I barely graduated high school, so I actually don't know what it means. <laughs> but I'm assuming it's like a not necessary or, or not humble or something. What's, what does pretentious mean? Yeah, pretentious means uh, uh, know somebody look it up. I mean, it's, it's a great word. Uh, what did you what, to, what did you to, mean to by be, it? <laughs> to be pretentious is to have pretenses about a certain issue or or something, but that's probably not even the the official version. But like you're talking about buying a plane, which sounds like I know it I'm kind of it's pretentious, unnecessary, something like that, right? And and when I look at it, I once saw this post. It was just a couple months ago, and it was this guy that chose not to sit in first class. He sat instead. Wait, he, he's got it right here. She's got it. The, oh, I mean, pretentious. Got it. Oh, here we go. Attempting to impress. By affecting greater importance, talent, culture, etc., than actually possess. So trying to impress by talking, like yeah. I'm about to buy a plane. The, the oh, thirty thousand, thirty thousand dollar a year millionaire. Yeah, yeah. Right? exactly. And so when I, I saw this guy's post, and he goes, "I sat in the back of the plane because the difference of the the com uh, commercial compared to or whatever it is, economy compared to first class was X amount of dollars, and if I invest that over the next fifty years, that's thirty seven thousand dollars or something like that, which I think is fine for." For when we first got married and I lost the business, I was making about 21K a year working full time. Yeah. So I don't fly. I, would, I was trying to live off 50% of my income, pretty impossible. But I didn't fly first class because there was just physically no reason to. It, was, it would have been stupid. But for someone like, like you or, or other people out there, it hit me so weird because as a Christian, it, I asked myself, I commented on the post and I said, hey man, is Jesus never supposed to be in first class? Is the saving of the—I get that you made that decision. That's cool. This guy makes a good amount of money. And I get that example. It's great. But is, is there never supposed to be a Christian that can talk about Jesus flying a plane? Like that is just off Oh, the country club that's a 100K initiation fee? Is there never supposed to be a Christian who golfs with all those people? Yeah. Like what if God was so big that he said, go drop 150K initiation fee because I've called you over this way? Yeah. Go go drop eight million dollars. Uh, how on are this those plane? guys going to know who spend six days at the country club? How are they going to know about the Lord? They're yeah. probably not going to go to church or first class. Who's talking there. about Jesus in first class? Is yeah. there never supposed to be anyone? No. And if they did, they made a really bad decision. That's good. That's really good. Like it just tripped me out. It's that like, abundance wow, mindset. Yeah. Right. Because if God's God may be calling you to live below your means, and again, you're not living above and going to all these different things. Yet also, what if God inside of your abundance is calling you to step outside of a comfort zone, especially someone like you who's grown up with a fantastic family. It's probably not, I mean, this is a big freaking place. That you got here. <laughs> Whatever. So it's not like, you're, yeah, Whatever. never mind, you're already doing it. But like, it just really hit me. Um, my wife and I, we actually just felt like, I literally felt God say, pick up golf. And then I already, within two weeks, I'm, I'm touring the country club right next to our house. And I'm like, God, like, what are we going to do here? And I felt like I know business guys that aren't Christians. Yeah. They would love to be served in this way. What if once a week I took them out on a round in awesome. a beautiful place and did something eternal, but it makes me uncomfortable because I grew up in a middle-class home in, in Southern California. Look, don't, ever, don't ever get a, uncomfortable about the Lord putting abundance into your life. Wow. You should be, as a business owner, you're called to be more. 
you should be comfortable with what the Lord's calling you to do. 